Guys, you know when you record an entire video and you didn't realize that OBS wasn't recording? Yeah, I mean, OBS sucks. But anyways, listen, today I want to talk about what happened yesterday. So last night, if you didn't know, if you didn't watch my video, I made a video stating that Bitcoin is currently in two ranges and that we got to be careful because the second range, the larger range, now your, your not darker red, your lighter red range has, uh, has confirmed as a range to me, okay? And I said that I believe it is... Um, irresponsible to not treat this as a larger range in the sense that, you know, up here we're in premium, down here we're in discount, and that prices can roll over. And I want to do something that I never did on the channel before, which is kind of address a comment. And I don't want to address this in a negative way, okay? This is not a condescending way. I very much encourage differences of opinion because in the event that you guys see something that I don't see, I kind of want to know about it and vice versa, okay? So shouts out to this Sam gentleman who, um, you know, disagreed with my idea of potentially coming back down to the lows of the range. I didn't say that we were going to come to the lows of the range. I just said, I'm approaching this range, not as just this red range that we have here, but as the larger red range and understanding that when it comes to range theory, you could easily make your way back down to the lows of the range when there's a gap here. Okay. Which there absolutely is right now. Everything I said in yesterday's video was a fact. Like we had a bearish four hour divergence, which by the way, is a fact that was not my opinion. And um, yeah, I, so I just wanted to address this comment because I didn't say we were going down. And obviously, Bitcoin, because of the FOMC, pumped like 4% today. So um, I just wanted to address it. Now, he disagreed with me back and forth. He actually gave me a comment that was kind of funny. Um, he basically told me his Dogecoin position and then, you know, said, I'm begging this time is different. But me begging makes me lean more towards you being right. But I hope for once you're goddamn wrong. That actually genuinely gave me a good chuckle. So thank you for that comment. But again, I just want to address this because it's not about being right or wrong, guys. I never said it was going to go down. Understanding that today was FOMC and understanding that this part of the range has now been confirmed. All yesterday was was a warning that it could go down. And, you know, again, everything I said was an objective truth, right? Your four hour bearish divergence was an objective truth. Us coming back up to the highs of the range, I even said, I'm like, look, I'm short. I took profits at the lows. If we come back, I'm looking to add to my, my shorts. And I absolutely am. And it's simple range theory. We are in the premium section of the range. And whichever way you slice the range, okay? Because if you're going to, I'm going to hide the, the bigger one for a second. If you're going to treat the range just as this lower, uh, the, the, just as this red box here, you're in the premium section of the smaller range, right? You're definitely not in the discount section of the smaller range. Now, if we bring back the big boy, you're in premium times two. Okay, so objectively speaking, up here, you shouldn't be looking for longs, right? The time to long was down here and down here, which we did long from yesterday. I am long right now as well. Remember, guys, I'm a trader. I don't care which way price goes. But anyways, I wanted to address that because the comment basically was like, uh, or, or the, the, the comment that made me actually want to make this video was him saying one time for the random, random YouTube guy, I genuinely felt that you know, every bearish call I made in the last four, four weeks were correct, but this one was too far. And I just want to remind you guys, first of all, congratulations, Sam, for being long. You're at the top of the range now, so I recommend you take profits, but I'm not a financial advisor. I'm five foot two and three quarters, and I want to be singer, so don't listen to me. But what I'm saying is, it's not about being right or wrong. I was not saying that we were going to go down. It was more of, this is the way that I'm approaching this range. And it's the same as if I were to really approach it in this smaller range as well, right? When you're in premium, you're looking for shorts like we shorted yesterday up here. And when you're in discount, you're looking for longs like in the, in the smaller range, we were looking for longs down here and we hit this long as well. So it's the same, same. The only thing that I was saying was that on this, this larger range now, I'm, I'm looking at it in terms of a larger range. Now, in the event that I actually said we were going to go down, uh, and you know, this, that, and the other, it really boils down to one thing, right? When am I invalidated? When is this idea invalidated? And it's quite simple guys. Look, nothing has changed. So respectfully to Sam, nothing has changed. You know, it pumping 4%, 5% today doesn't mean that I was quote unquote wrong for saying what I said yesterday in terms of me taking the, the larger range approach. I'm going to delete the lower one. We don't need it. The larger range approach. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's changed right? My whole reasoning for saying, oh, I want to come down and potentially accumulate and come down to these levels are because of this uh, macro value area low. And we touched upon this yesterday. So I'm kind of paraphrasing here. But realistically, we were in this macro range for like four or five months. Bitcoin was unable to come up and take the highs. And now all that we're doing is we're fighting the value area low of that range once, twice, three, four, five, and now potentially six times, right? 
So respectfully, nothing, nothing has changed. We're just simply in our range. And we could even come up and SFP this high, right? This high right here that I've drawn a line on. We could even come up and SFP that high and still have things looking bearish or potentially looking like it's going to roll over to these lows of the range. So when am I going to no longer pay attention to the lows of the range? And the answer to that question is quite simple. I need to see some form of strength. Listen, this is an undeniable truth. Right now, we are in a downtrend on a higher time frame. This is a lower, a high, a low, potentially a lower high. It could happen here. It could happen here. It doesn't matter. And then potentially a lower low. We're in a downtrend. This is undeniable. This is a fact. I'm not saying that we're not going to go higher. I'm saying we are in a downtrend. And so when you're understanding this and you're, you're looking at the chart for what it is, and you're looking at what price action is doing, and you're building your narrative, and you're understanding what's actually happening here in that the, the market does not want to price in Bitcoin at 62K. We've rejected it now, or potentially, this is the sixth time in a row. And I'll tell you this, if it's not going to go up, it's probably going to go down, right? And especially now that we've identified this larger part of our range, we know that we can come and fill this pocket. So, you know, in order for me to think that this idea is null or nil, as my UK people say, my footballers, uh, I want to see a breakout, right? I want to see a breakout. I want to see us claim the value area low, potentially reject from like 66K, 64K. There are levels up here that Bitcoin can absolutely head its way towards. And I am watching for them and I am looking for shorts because we are in the premium section of the range. I will be looking for SFPs of this high, et cetera, right? But for me to put the idea to rest or on the back burner that we're going to come down or that we could come down to here is I want to see a breakout. I want to see a breakout. I want to see a retest. I want to see a market structure flip. And then off and away we go. And then in, if that were to happen, then I would consider this old range, which is the smaller range, to be your range-based supply, or, or sorry, range-based demand, where you can then come back down to mitigate and then have your continuation upwards, effectively following your overall up structure like this. Okay. So Again, it's not about being right or wrong. I never said we were going down. I said, I actually said, if we come back up, I'll be looking for shorts. And that's what happened. So I kind of said, I didn't say it was going to go up, but I didn't say it was going to go down. But um, I just wanted to address that because I think a lot of people, and I'm not saying this is the case for you, Sam, but a lot of people like are very emotional when it comes to trading and they see like, oh my God, Bitcoin's up 4%. We're going back to all time high. When we're in reality, we're literally just at the top of the range. And, you know, they forget about their plan. So this was my plan that I shared with you guys. And the plan is not um, invalidated yet. Not in the slightest. Actually, if anything, I'm excited that it pumped back to the highs of the range because I know for even a longer amount of time now, we have not come down to the lows of the range. So, you know, this gives me opportunities to get even bigger risk rewards, even bigger um, P&Ls and percentages and, and, and so forth. So, Anyways, I just wanted to say that, you know, big shout out to Sam. I do encourage, um, you know, difference of opinion. I'm not always right. And I just share what I see on the charts and what I'm doing. And if you guys see things differently than I do, then again, I welcome, I welcome open dialogue. I welcome the, the difference of opinion, of course, in a respectful way, not in a condescending way. You guys know that's the number one thing I hate. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's basically, you know, okay, FOMC pumped and nothing really happened. We haven't done anything. We're simply just still in the range. Similar to how on the macro, I don't even think we dumped because we are just in the range. Anyways, I want to leave us with one more thing. This is kind of more opinion driven or opinion. I mean, not really opinion, but man, it seems to me like every time Bitcoin is on the brink of death, some news event happens like these FOMCs that happen, I swear to God, every two hours or Trump gets shot, or Biden steps down, or whatever. It seems like some news event comes and rescues the day on old Biddy. And um, again, I'm not saying that it can't go up, right? Being objective, we have daily bullish divergences, two-day, three-day bullish divergences. Weekly looks like it could be bottoming out here soon. So we could get a large move to the upside. Absolutely, I'm not denying that. I live. You guys know I live in reality. I don't sugarcoat shit. I don't BS shit. But... Also, when you have a bearish uh, four-hour divergence, I mean, you got to take that seriously. You can't be ignorant to it and just say, oh, yeah, we're going to the moon because of that. And actually now, we, if we continue to SFP this four-hour high, which we're kind of doing right now, you'll get three waves potentially of bearish divergences on the four-hour time frame. So, yeah, there's reason to go higher. But 
there's a reason to go lower as well. And that's basically my whole point to these videos, right? Like that's that's what I say. When I when I share what I'm seeing in the market, I'm not saying this is going to happen or this is going to happen. I'm saying because this happened, I'm looking at it this way. Because that happened, I'm looking at it this way. And I'm telling you now, because we pumped today, I'm looking at it like I can short even further down. I can short it even harder now. And if I'm wrong, not I'm wrong, but if I don't get my confirmations and we do end up breaking out, well, then we flip our tune and we go bullish and we ride that bitch up. But when I'm at the high of the range, I'm definitely not looking along the high of the range. Anyways, guys, if you like the content, make sure to hit the like button. If you love the content, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Watch yesterday's video if you didn't watch it to get caught up on here because I still think that we got a larger range at hand and I still think that... Uh, I mean, guys, you know my favorite thing in trading is liquidity, man. Like, this is liquidity, guys. That's liquidity. That is liquidity. Don't get me wrong. We have liquidity above as well. Some people would call this a symmetrical triangle or whatever you guys, you retailers call it. You Walmart buyers, consumers call it. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's not about being right or wrong. Anyways, shout out to Sam. Shout out to you watching. Thank you for making it to the end. And I will see you guys in the next video.